So endometriosis, it takes an average of eight doctors over 10 years to diagnose. This has been the same for decades. It's still the same today. We have young people going doctor after doctor, test after test. I first heard the word at 29. So I went 13 years before I even heard the word. Um, and this is after I had two, mis I had two miscarriages. I had multiple surgeries. Um, so a lot of physical, personal, emotional damage, you know, that were needless. And why is that? Should I go into some of the systemic issues and gender bias? No, and please do. <laughs> That's why we're here. Why is there gender bias in medicine? I'm, I'm, an, I'm, I'm a filmmaker, but I'm also a lawyer and, uh, and an activist. So I've looked at this issue in a lot of different ways. And of course, it all starts with we live in a world controlled by men. And that's how it's always been. And unfortunately, that's still how it is. And we are all trying to do the best we can living with still and then that paradigm in that ocean that we all, you know, that's the way the system is built at the moment. Because of that, we are almost taught to be unreliable witnesses to our own bodies. We're conditioned that we feel like we're unreliable witnesses to our own bodies, to our own health. So we're, we're already starting when we talk about our experience um, of this position of being, you know, disempowered. So um, there are three things that I think that we can focus in on. The first is education and taboo. If we don't understand our bodies and body parts, then how can we actually communicate what's going on? Menstrual health education, for example. I, there, was a, there was a UK charity, I think it's called Eva Peel, that they did um, a research recently that 44% of women could not find vagina on a diagram. 44%. Because they haven't been taught. We haven't been taught. Uh, like, for example, you know, things that are going on in the Florida state legislature without getting too, you know, political at the moment, where they don't want to teach mental health education to children less than sixth grade. Sixth, I have a sixth grade daughter. She's 11. Um, she understands periods because I'm her mother. But she has classmates that have started their period and been terrified because they don't understand what's happening in their body. So we're seeing this codification of education in older adolescents uh, because it's about that control, in my opinion. Uh, and beyond that, with taboos, the Clue app, they did a um, research recently where it's, there are 5,000 euphemisms for the word period because we're all steer still using other words. Uh, because we haven't been taught the vocabulary. We have been taught that it should be secret. And that's what we're dealing with the first education and taboo. Second is this long standing idea of hysteria in modern medicine. <laughs> We've all heard about the wandering womb hysteria. But the thing is, what's happened now, it's been modernized to summonization. And this, this idea that if modern medicine can't find out what's going on with you, then the impetus is on you. Like you're the problem. Your mental health is the problem because the, the doctor can't, because of their toolbox, can't find the answer, then it must be you. And that's this idea of hysteria. And hysteria, the, the, the concept of hysteria ignores the fact that modern medical research doesn't really know a lot about women. The NIH Office for Research on Women's Health wasn't even set up until 1990. The NIH didn't start doing research on women until 1993. Um, did you know, for example, 80% of chronic pain patients are women, yet 70% of chronic pain research is done on men? And this is the last stat I'll give, which is particularly egregious. Uh, up until 2016, one six, this is what, seven years ago? There was the NIH did not require that pain drugs must be tested on women. They were only tested on men. Seven years ago. So this is the ocean we're dealing with. <laughs> it's not a shark. It's an ocean. It's a system.